Driving has the tendency of bringing you to some pretty amazing locations. However, the farther you go, the greater the fear, as running out of gas or having your car break down without cell phone coverage could mean not only the end of your trip, but even worse, the end of your car. Over the last few years of filming at Roads and Traveled, we've had our fair share of close calls. But it wasn't until our last trip throughout the United States that I decided that it was time to come up with a viable solution in order to ensure that we'd never have this problem again. That is when I discovered cell phone signal boosters, which is a small device you install inside your car that amplifies your cell phone network. Wanting to review one for the channel, I'd start doing some research to see what brand would be the best one to review. And time and time again, I kept on coming across WeBoost. Now, WeBoost makes not only a consumer model, but as well for government and business use. So emergency vehicles can be equipped with them, and so they're trusted across all demographics. So I thought this is a perfect brand to test out, and I had them send me one of their boosters. So today, we're gonna go and check that out and see if it works. So before we get into it, I just wanna say that we're not getting paid to make this review. WeBoost did send me this device to test out on our channel, but they just wanted to know exactly how it worked for me. But anyways, this is the new Drive Reach model that was just released recently and is one of the most powerful in-vehicle boosters yet. It provides a 50 decibel gain, which amplifies your phone up to 32 times. Now what makes this one in particular really cool is the fact that not only will it boost your own cell signal, but as well as boost any other cell signal in the car, regardless of the carrier. So if you're driving with friends, you can all have great reception. What's nice about this particular model is it's plug and play design and it's powered through your cigarette lighter. So it's built to actually offer a tools free installation process, making it very easy to switch from one vehicle to another. Now filming here at Roads and Traveled, we're on a new vehicle on a weekly basis. So if we're on a shoot that takes us out of the province, it's very easy to remove from my car and put it into a new vehicle without going through an extensive installation process. Now one downside I do have to point out right off the bat is the fact that these are actually region specific. Meaning being here in Canada, I had to order the Canadian version. Now this will work through all Canadian actual cell phone carriers, but if I do cross the border and go down to the States, this will not work. So if you do want to order one, make sure you're buying it for the correct country. But anyways, let's open up the box and take a look at what's inside. So the first thing you're gonna notice as soon as you open this up is just how much effort went into trying to simplify the installation process. What I mean by that is every component is actually labeled with installation instructions as well as a corresponding step number. So you're never having to scroll through the actual installation guide or the manual to figure out what happens next. So as soon as you pick up the main unit itself, the first thing you're gonna realize is just how hefty and well built this is. It has an aluminum body which feels absolutely great and is a very solid device overall. Also in the box, you have your exterior antenna, which is magnetic, your power cable, which plugs into the cigarette lighter, as well as your interior antenna, and this is what your phone actually connects to. But anyways, now that we have all the components together, let's hop into the garage and try to install it. Now the first thing you'll have to do before you start the installation process is decide whereabouts you want to mount the device itself. Now based on the current configuration of my car, I decided to mount it underneath the passenger seat, just so I had constant easy access to make any minor adjustments if needed. Once you've decided on a location, you can then move forward to the first step, which is mounting the outside magnetic antenna to the roof of the car. Now, there's a couple things you want to make sure that you do first. Number one is to make sure that the surface area is clean. So I used a spray with a microfiber cloth just to make sure there's no debris on the top of the roof. Position the antenna near the center of the roof and make sure that it's at least 12 inches away from any other antennas. Also, make sure it's 12 inches away from any windows and that includes sunroofs. Now unfortunately, I did find the cable for the outside antenna to be a little bit on the short side, so I was unable to actually feed the cord itself through the trunk like I initially planned. So instead, I fed it through the back passenger side door. In order to feed the cable through the weather stripping, gently pull on the rubber itself until it separates from the metal frame. After feeding it through, make sure that you push the weather seal back on track just to make sure that the door itself is still sealed properly from the elements outside. In order to provide a cleaner look, I pushed the cable into the inside weather stripping and then fed it down the plastic columns which I separated by just applying a little bit of pressure. The next step is you need to mount the inside antenna. 
Now you have two options. You can either mount it on your dash or you can mount it on the side of the seat. Inside the box, you'll find that there's two different mounting strips depending on the location that you want to put it. However, make sure that the location is at least 18 inches, but no more than 36 inches away from the cellular device that is being used. For my installation, I decided to install it on the passenger side center console to ensure that it is away and will not be pushed or bumped. Next, I pulled all the cables underneath the passenger seat to ensure that nothing was on top of the actual seat rails itself to avoid any damage to the cables. Now the main unit itself has a mounting bracket that you can take off and bolt down to any surface that you would like. However, they also give you a second option by putting Velcro strips on the back which stick to the carpet quite well. And I found this was the easiest option, especially considering that I plan on moving this from vehicle to vehicle. Next, connect the inside and outside antenna to the corresponding ports on the booster itself. Each side is labeled, so make sure that you get each one in the right spot. The final step is to power the booster itself. So take the DC power adapter and plug it into the cigarette lighter and then feed the cord back to the unit. Now in my situation, I found that I had a lot of extra cable slack. So to avoid people from tripping over the wires, I decided to tie them up using the cable ties that they provided. And just like that, the booster is installed and ready to use. It only took me a total of 15 minutes to complete the installation process. All right, so now that everything's installed in this vehicle, let's test it out. Now, I am parked in front of my house right now, and right now I actually have full bars. So this won't be a proper test, but at least you can start to see the difference this device makes. So I'm using an Android device right now. So what I have to do is I have to go into settings, go to the about phone, status, SIM card status, and then my signal strength is displayed. So right now I'm getting negative 96 dBm. So what I'm gonna do now is turn on my car, which is gonna power the device and see if that changes. Now the goal for this is to actually have this number go as low as possible. The lower the number, the more powerful the signal. And just like that, you can already see the signal strength go down to negative 87, which is a great boost considering we already have full signal where we are. But now let's really go put this device to the test and actually go test it out in a few areas where usually my cell phone would actually cut out altogether. All right, so now in order to properly test out this device, I'm going to one of my favorite camping locations just outside the lower mainland. Now this area is notorious for having terrible cell phone coverage. And as of right now, as I approach the gate, I only have one bar. So usually cell phone coverage will cut out altogether within the first five minutes of going down the trail. But we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna go about 45 minutes down to one of the actual campsites there. And I'll turn on the device to actually see if it gives me enough signal to make a phone call. All right, so as you can probably see, and as you can probably hear, I am far off the beaten path. I haven't had cell coverage for about 45 minutes now and I'm deep down into the trail. Very rocky, very bumpy, um, and there's not a single other car out here. So this is the worst place you would ever want to break down. However, I have a range booster, so hopefully, as you can see on my phone, I don't have coverage. Um, hopefully the range booster will come in handy and will actually give me cell phone range. So in the off chance I actually do break down while trying to film this video, um, I can actually call for assistance. I'm actually using an app called Signal Check Lite, which was recommended by WeBoost, in order to check and monitor the range difference the device will make, as it's just a little bit of an easier, simplified um, layout versus going through the about area on your phone. All right, so now it's the moment of truth. As you can see, I have no coverage at all right now, and I'm about to turn on the device to see if it'll get me any signal whatsoever. And just like that, I have negative 101 dBm. It's bouncing between 101 and 99, which isn't by any means the greatest signal in the world, but considering I'm in the middle of nowhere right now with no coverage whatsoever without the device, this actually allows me to send and receive messages. 
So by no means is this giving me full bars, but at the same time, it is giving me enough signal to actually make and receive phone calls, which is great. I'm actually really impressed by this because I can actually make a phone call and the moment I hit the off button in the middle of phone call, it will instantly cut out. Like it's, it's impressive how powerful this little thing is. But now before we call it a day, I do want to go and do one more test, which is actually through a tunnel in the lower mainland. So we're going to go drive there right now. All right, so for our next test, we're gonna really push this device to the limit. Where we're going right now is underwater. It's a tunnel that actually goes underneath the river here in the lower mainland. It's notorious for losing cell signal as well as your radio or GPS or anything because again, you're underwater, it's not surprising. So let's see if this device actually allows me to maintain my cell signal as I'm driving through the tunnel. So what I'm actually going to do is turn on the radio slightly so you can actually hear the radio cut out. And at that point, you know that we are underwater and that's usually the moment that we lose all signal altogether. All right, here we go into the tunnel. Okay, we're maintaining the signal strength so far. It is at negative 86, but we still have a strong signal. And as you can hear right now, there's nothing but static on the radio. We are underwater. And right now we have negative 85 dBm. That's incredible. We have cell signal under water in a tunnel right now. I'm blown away. I had no expectation whatsoever that this would actually work. And I actually have signal. I can make a phone call and use my data. That is incredible. And now we're out. Wow, the signal did not even dip. I am shocked at how well that worked. So after driving around with this for the last couple of days, I have to say I'm very impressed with its performance. It's incredible how powerful this little device is. And if you're somebody who does a lot of driving, I can't recommend this enough. However, if the majority of the driving you are doing is through a city or a densely populated area, you might not see the benefit from it as much. But that being said, if you're someone like me who actually enjoys driving on long road trips, exploring new areas, or especially camping, this device is for you. However, if you do take this device camping, make sure that you do not tell other people that you have a booster in your vehicle. Seriously, do not tell other people. The moment they find out, they're gonna be hassling you nonstop to unlock your car. And before you know it, on the first day, you're gonna have a dead battery. So besides from that, the only other downside is like what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that these devices are region specific. Now that seems to be standard across the board and not unique to this particular one. However, there is a big upside about having one of these installed and crossing the border. Because here in Canada, and for you Americans who don't know, our cell phone plans are terrible. For me to use my cell phone, I get charged an additional $8 per day the moment I cross the border from my actual carrier. However, having this device installed allowed me to stay connected to Canadian cell phone towers when I go and pick up packages across the border. So it makes those day trips a lot easier and it helps me avoid that $8 per day charge. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you check out WeBoost and their other product lines in the links in the description. Also, if you've ever used one of these boosters before, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you think of them. See you guys next time.